Hello, uh, I am Apoor Bapat working with Altair Engineering Private Limited. In this video, I am going to cover the beam bending exercise using hyperbeam and verifying the results with hand calculation. First of all, we will begin with the problem definition uh, which has been used in this particular uh, tutorial. So in this uh, tutorial, uh, we have taken a 100 mm length of solid circular beam which is having a cross-sectional diameter of 100 mm. This is subjected to a bending uh, load of 30,000 Newton in Y direction which is in negative Y direction and it is fixed at the other end. The stress values will be calculated by using the formulas given below and then this same problem will be solved in hypermesh uh, and then we will see uh, comparison between both that is the values which we get for stress and deflection using hand calculation that is using the formulas and the values generated by software after per doing the complete uh, process so what are the values of stresses and deflection generated by software so we will go with the comparison of these two results uh, we are doing the comparison uh, because to find out how the software behaves for a, a particular problem and what are the parameters which we provide to the software to solve a basic linear static analysis. So we will first see a hand calculation process. So in hand calculation we use uh, stress is equals to my by i where we put m is equals to pl and i is equals to pi by pi d to the power 4 by 64 as it is a uh, circular cross section then putting all the required values in above equation we find out uh, that the magnitude of stress for this particular uh, problem statement uh, comes as 305.56 newton per mm square and after uh, using the formula for deflection as pl cube by 3 ei we find out the deflection of this particular problem comes as 9.7 mm. So now we will uh, see how to solve the particular problem uh, using Hyperworks student edition. So for any type of analysis we follow uh, some basic rules uh, or there is a one formula used in industries to generate uh, uh, to perform uh, basic so the formula used in uh, industries to perform uh, linear static analysis first of all we will discuss that so this is the formula used in industries to perform basic any type of basic linear static analysis is mpcll uh, all uh, everyone uses this process to successfully complete their analysis here M stands for material collector. In material collector we provide the material properties for my uh, model or component. Then in uh, second P stands for property collector. In property collector we provide the physical properties of uh, for the component that is the cross sectional areas and the thickness if we are talking about the sheet metals. So we provide all these details in property collector. Then we club uh, property collector and material collector in component collector. The next step is to create component collector. As in assemblies it may be possible some of the components have a different thickness or different properties. May be possible they are you, you can perform uh, different types of analysis for uh, different materials in single component. So you create some component collectors and club them uh, required properties and material. Then the next step is to create load collector. In load collector we create the required loads and boundary conditions uh, for our assembly or model. Then after that we create a load step. Load step uh, defines the type of analysis which we are going to perform uh, using the different uh, solvers. So in load step we define the type of analysis and on the type of analysis uh, we can we have to define the loads and boundary condition. So we will follow these steps to uh, complete our uh, problem definition which uh, we have discussed earlier. So we will start uh, with creating material collector first. So to create material collector 
you have this icon uh, which is used to create material collector or you can right click on the model browser go to create and create material in this go to uh, material the, these are the two ways you can create the material uh, for your geometry or model so click on this icon once you click on this icon uh, the material collector panel will open in material collector panel make sure you are on a create a radio button the create radio button is selected then enter the material name as steel I will select the material as steel then define a particular color for the material select the type of material you are using I have selected the type of material as isotropic for this problem after selecting the type of material uh, provide the required card image for the material collector that is card image defines the additional requirement uh, as the input for the software that if uh, you are using aluminium so it has certain uh, properties of aluminium so you have to define that properties of aluminium if you are using steel so you have to define the properties of steel so as per the properties you have to select the card image and in those card image you can provide the required properties of the material as e value of e new and row these properties can be provided uh, using the card image here there are two card image available for isotropic material one is mat1 and another one is mat4 in uh, there is a small difference between mat1 and mat4 in mat4 you can provide the thermal coefficients uh, for your material properties but in mat1 uh, you cannot provide the thermal coefficients for your material properties so if you are performing any thermal analysis or heat coefficient is required uh, for your analysis so you can use mat4 otherwise if it's not required you can use mat1 so in our uh, problem statement uh, we don't require any thermal coefficient for our model so we use mat1 as a card image once you provide the card image then click on create edit button once you click on create edit button it will redirect you to edit this card image and provide the required information so click on this uh, create edit button once you enter to create edit button it will enter to card image panel and you can see it will ask you to provide uh, required details for the mat1 card image so here we will provide the value of e new and row so by default hyperworks provides you or uh, gets the value of steel for e new and row if you want to provide some different if you want to create some different material using hyperworks you can change this value uh, by entering here as I want to if I want to change the material uh, value of E then I can just type it here and it will get changed as you can see so I will again change this to uh, material value for steel so this is the material value for steel once you enter all these three details click return to exit the material collector card image and accept these values so click return to exit this card image panel again click return to exit the material collector now on model browser once you create the material on model browser you can see uh, you can access model browser from here if you click on this tab it will open the model browser and the things which you will create the material load collectors boundary condition load step everything you can find it on a tree format in material browser so my material has a, I, I have created material as steel so you can find it here the material as steel has been created now I will enter has created then my next step is to create property collector 
So to create property collector, click on this icon. This icon is used to create property collector or in a similar manner as material collector, you can go to uh, right click on a model browser and you can and click here to generate the property collector for your model. So I'll click on this icon which is provided here to create the property collector. But for 1D uh, element processes, uh, first you have to define the, before defining the property collector, you have to define the uh, cross-sectional area. So in this tutorial, I am going to show you one more uh, process of generating a cross-sectional area directly using Hyperbeam, which is embedded in Hyperworks itself. So by using Hyperbeam, you can directly define the cross-sectional area of your uh, beam section or bar section so first we will uh, generate a beam uh, or cross sectional area using hyperbeam so to generate a cross sectional area or uh, using hyperbeam go to 1d in 1d you will find hyperbeam so in this way you can generate uh, click on hyperbeam to enter hyperbeam panel in hyperbeam panel select standard section these standard section radio button will provide you uh, some standard sections available in hyperbeam which you can directly create so once you enter to standard section select the standard section library as hyperbeam so select click on the drop down and select the standard section library as hyperbeam once you select that, select the standard section type as solid circle because in my problem definition, the uh, as per my problem definition, we are using a solid circular beam of 100 mm diameter. So I will I have select solid circle as a stand, standard section type. So in standard section type, select solid circle. You can click on this drop down icon to select the solid circle. Once you select the solid circle, click on create to create a solid circular cross section or hyperbeam section. So just click on create. It will redirect you to hyperbeam GUI. In hyperbeam GUI, you, can, you will find as a, a solid circular window is there. And the value of radius is uh, available already as 10 default value. As per the value of uh, radius, it will generate uh, area and moment of inertia, centroidals, principal axis, polar radius of gyrations, every details which it requires for the solving process, it calculates automatically all the required parameters related to the solid circular cross section, it will calculate automatically. So as per my problem definition, my radius of the circular cross section is 50 so I will enter here as 50 once I enter here 50 all the required details get changed as you can see the area has changed moment of inertia will change and it the software will automatically calculate all the required parameters by using the predefined formulas in hyperworks so once you define the hyperbeam cross section, you can change the name from here. Just right click on the uh, auto one and rename as circular section and radius is 50. So, so that it will be easy for you to, mm. it will be easy for you to, if you are using uh, say 5 or 10 different cross sections uh, in hyperbeam then uh, to distinguish that uh, what is the particular cross sectional uh, dimensions of the uh, hyperbeam you can enter this and from here you can find that this one is having a solid circular cross section of radius 50 so in this way you can define it so you can always rename it's always better to rename the component as per the availability okay so once you define uh, hyperbeam uh, then to again move into hyperworks or hypermesh GUI 
click on the icon available here click on this icon to again move in to hyperworks gui click on this icon once you click on this icon it will move to hyperworks gui so in hyperworks gui there in model browser you will find a solid circular beam section of radius 50 has been created now we will use this solid circular cross section uh, as the input for our property collector to input the required parameters so again I will click on this icon to enter the property collector panel once you click on this icon make sure that uh, you are selected a uh, create radio button then once you select the create radio button enter the property name as beam property select a color from the color palette select the type of element you want to create a property for so as we are solving this process for 1D elements so we will select the type of element as 1D then select the appropriate card images different card images uh, requires different input from the user so P bar card image requires uh, input for bar elements P beam card image requires a card image for beam elements so we are using a beam element to, for this particular problem so we use P beam as card image once you select a P beam card image a new section that is a hyper beam panel got selected so you have to select the hyper beam section which you have created so I will select a circular section of radius 50 I have selected that and also we have to club property with a proper material so I will select the material as steel so my property has been clubbed with the proper material and then as I already told you that whenever you provide the card image always go for create edit so it will once you go to create edit it will help you to enter certain values in to or to edit the card image so go to create edit once you enter to create edit panel you can see it will go to the card image panel of p beam card image the software automatically takes the value of area polar moment of inertia every detail it has it automatically enters due to the as we have already provided the beam section now my next option is to provide uh, uh, some nodal location for calculation points in a solid circular region for beam section so I will check the box as uh, continuation line 2 and enter these values as C1 a C2 A D1 A D2 A E1 A E2 A F1 A F2 A in 1D element the in hyperworks or in any CA software the calculations are made at the nodal location so as we are solving a beam bending exercise using 1D element so uh, in beam bending uh, practically if we see one side will have a tension and the other side will have goes to the compression stresses so to find the location of uh, tension and compression stresses we define four nodal locations at the point of uh, force so uh, one point will have a tension stress results and the point opposite to that will have a compression stress results so I will define you first what are these C1 C2 uh, D1, D2, E1, E2 point resembles. So again I will go to hyperbeam section. So uh, this is a circular cross section. So if I extend this so this is positive y direction in hyperworks always hmm. the C point starts with a positive y direction then in clockwise direction keep on moving as point D E and F so to define this point we require two additional parameters two coordinates that is Y and Z 
again to define this point we require two parameters that is y and z again for point E we require two parameters that is minus y and z and for F we require y and minus z so for point C the value of z is 0 in for point D the value of y will be 0 again for point E the value of z will be 0 and similarly point uh, for point F the value of y will be 0 so as I have entered the radius as 50 so here the value of y will be 50 here the value of z will be 50 here the value of y will be minus 50 comma 0 and here the value of z will be minus 50 so in this way we have to provide uh, the details for the particular section now as I have I have to define the load of 30,000 Newton in this I'm, I'm going to apply the load in 30,000 Newton in this direction so my point C will show the tension results and my point E will show the results of compression so to find out the results of the bending for one particular side and another particular side you can use you have to provide these four nodal locations or uh, imaginary nodal locations in 1D element okay so again I will move to hyperbeam GY and provide the points to define the nodal calculation points so for C1 I will enter 50 C2 0, D1 0, D2 50, E1 minus 50, E2 0, F1 0, F2 minus 50. Here again I will explain you that C1 is C point having a y axis, this is a C point Z, then D point Y D point Z E Y E minus Y at E Z F Y F minus Z Y is 50 as I have seen this is 0 this is also 0 this is 50 minus 50 this is 0 this is 0 this is minus 50 so I have entered all these values as per the uh, uh, method I have shown so now we will click return to accept these details and again I will click return to exit the property collector panel so in this way I have created a property collector panel now my next step is to create component collector so to create component collector you can uh, first we will see my property has been created in the model browser you can see the property has been defined as beam property now my next step is to create component collector so to create component collector click on this icon this icon is used as component collector to create component collector this icon is used once you enter to component collector panel make sure you are on create radio button then enter the component name as beam component select a color for beam component we don't require any additional parameters for this particular problem statement to be defined in component collector in component we only require material and properties so we have already defined the material and property we will only club these material and properties to the uh, component which we are creating so I will click on property 
and select the property which I have created. So once you select the property, you will find here that the card image of property that is PBM has been selected. Is PBM has selected, that means all the additional parameters related to the property of the component has got selected in component collector. The property uh, we have as we have clubbed the material in properties, so material also gets selected. And in card image, the properties related to material uh, got selected in a component collector. So everything is embedded in component collector. So as I haven't provided any card image, so I will click on create to create my component collector. So in model browser again, you will find my component collector got created. Now as my component collector got created, now I'll click return to exit this panel. And now my next step is to create the elements on which we, uh, we are going to perform the analysis. So to create the element, we, there are two processes to create the element. First, on surfaces you can uh, create elements or on lines you can create elements. Otherwise, you can create nodes and with the help of those nodes you can create the elements. So the, as we don't have any surfaces right now, so we will first create nodes and with the help of those nodes we will create elements for the pro to solve this particular problem. So to create nodes on the geometry, go to geometry page. In geometry page, you will find nodes panel. That is, it's on first column, first row. So click on nodes to enter the nodes panel. As in the problem definition, I have a beam section of 1000 mm in length. So I will select the x axis as 0, y 0, z 0. So first node will be on the origin. And then I will create a second node on x axis. That is the length will be on x axis and say create. So if the nodes are not visible after creating, click F from your keyboard. Click F from your keyboard to fit to screen. F is used for fit to screen. So it will fit my uh, GUI as per the uh, two nodes. So my two nodes has got created. Now uh, to view the results in better way or to see the color panel in a much better way, I will create some more panels and I will show you that how to create more number of 1D elements in the job for the particular geometry. So I will uh, show you here also. You Either uh, there are in also you can create one single element using these two nodes. So uh, in this tutorial, I am creating some more nodes to show you some more panels that how to create. If you want to create some more nodes in between two particular nodes, how to create them. So to create some more nodes, go to this panel. This panel is used to create nodes in between two nodes. So I will select from the node list these two nodes in between I have to create some nodes so for this model problem statement I will create 10 number of nodes between these two so I will enter number of nodes between in this panel I will add number of nodes between to 10 and say create so once you click create you will find the 10 nodes have been created that is 1 2 3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So 10 nodes of equidistance have been created between these two nodes. Okay. Now the next step is to create elements, 1D element using these two nodes. So to create 1D element using these two nodes, go to 1D page by clicking on this radio button. In 1D page, select bars panel bar panels are used to create bar elements as well as beam elements so to create bar and beam elements you can use this panel so click on bars once you enter to bar panel first of all make sure you are on bar to radio button then first you have it, it's always better to select the property 
for your uh, element first and then select the type of element you are using so first of all I will select the property that I have created as beam property and then select the type of element as C beam C beam means uh, C beam element type I have selected then I will select the orientation that is the alignment of the, my cross section uh, for this uh, beam problem so as I have uh, created the length in x-axis so I will orient the cross-section either in y or z-axis I cannot orient the cross-section in x-axis because if I orient the cross-section in x-axis then uh, it will create something like this and there will no there will not be any length in my geometry because this is the radius and this is also the radius so it will orient something like this so I want to I have created uh, the beam as length of this so I will create a cross section perpendicular to this length so I will orient my cross section either on y axis or on z axis okay so I will orient this on y axis so if I orient this on y axis I will again go to hyper beam now what I am doing as I have already told you this is point C D E F so I have oriented this point C with the global y axis as you have seen this is y z so I have oriented this with the positive uh, this is global y axis and now I am applying force of negative 30,000 uh, in y direction in point C so point C will show the tension side of stresses and point E will show the compression side of stresses if I orient uh, point uh, Z axis with the Y axis it always orient with the global Y axis so if I orient Z axis then point D will move to the tension one and E will move to the compression one so in this problem I have selected Y axis to orient with the Y axis so C point will go to the tension one okay so again I will move it to hyperbox GY and orient it with Y axis now click on node A and select the first node then node B will automatically get highlighted and select the second node so once you select the nodes it will the beam section got automatically created as you can see so the beam section has got created now I will you can change the color of the component by using the color palette so you can see uh, my beam section has got created and each element is showing that this element is a C beam element that is a beam section element this is a 1D representation so in Hyperworks from Hyperworks 11 you can view uh, a 1D or 2D representing elements into a 3D representation that is you can see its cross sectional area or thickness in case of 2D by clicking or by going on this icon so this icon is used to convert the 1D or 2D into 3D sections so this is the 3D element representation so it will only show the representation so you can see this is the um, beam section or to view it into shaded geometry so to view elements in shaded geometry click on this icon so you can see in this manner I have generated a model in hypermesh itself by generating nodes and elements so my problem definition is uh, for the geometry point of view has been completed now uh, my next step after uh, creating uh, material property and component and generating the model my next step is to apply loads and boundary condition that is the forces and constraint on this model so I'll again 
convert this into a 1D representation and then I will show you how to generate uh, uh, how to apply force and constraints on your model so to up first I will click return to exit 1D panel now I will first create load collector as force and then I will apply this force on the on my model so to create load collector as force go to load collector panel in load collector panel and make sure you are on create radio button you is selected then enter the load collector name as force select a color from the color palette we don't require any particular information related to force because you will create force from different panel here so click create to create a load collector so this load collector got created you can see in the model browser this load collector got created now I will apply force using this load collector on my model so to apply force first I will click return to exit the load collector panel and to apply force on your model click on analysis page in analysis page you will find force panel so this panel is used to apply forces on your model so click on forces once you click on forces uh, panel uh, make sure that you have selected create radio button then select the node on which you want to apply the force so I will apply the force in this location this uh, then I uh, will apply the force for the global system my magnitude of force is minus 30 degree 30,000 Newton and the direction of force will be y axis so in negative y axis I am going to create a force of 30,000 Newton then the percentage magnitude that is the representing of force the force is represented in hyperbox as an arrow single arrow so if I click create you can see it has shown that the force has created having a magnitude of 30,000 Newton and the direction of force you can see from here the direction of force is in minus y direction that is negative y direction now the next step uh, after creating force is to create constraints for my geometry for this particular problem statement I am going to constrain uh, this model for all the six degrees of freedom that is I will fix this uh, second end of the, my geometry so I will click return so to apply constraint first you need to create a load collector for constraint a different load collector for constraint so click on this icon to enter a load collector panel again make sure you are on create radio button is selected and enter the name of the load collector name as SPC SPC stands for single point constraint in industries many a times uh, people use instead of constraint they use SPC or MPC MPC stands for multi point constraint and SPC stands for single point constraint select a different color from the panel and click create so once you click create you will find the load collector as SPC is got created now my next step is to apply this constraint on my model so to apply the constraint on my model you want uh, we first we will go to return and exit the load collector panel to apply constraint on my model go to analysis page in analysis page click on constraint panels this constraint panel allows us to apply constraints on my model so in constraint panel first make sure you are on create radio button select the node on which you want to apply constraint this size is the size of representing triangle 
the constants are represented by using triangle. So this size resembles the uh, size of the triangle or representing of the constraint. Now I will explain you what is DOF 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. DOF 1 stands for translation along x-axis. DOF 2 stands for translation along y-axis. DOF 3 stands for translation along z-axis. DOF 4 stands for rotation along x-axis. DOF 5 stands for rotation about y-axis. And DOF 6 stands for rotation about z-axis. So if they are ticked, that means they are constraints or this point will be uh, restricted to move in these particular degrees of freedom. If they are unticked, that means this particular point is free to move in this particular location. So depending on that, it will move. Okay, so I will select this node and click create. So once you click create, the constraint got created and you can see here the details are been provided below that that it has been constrained for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that is all the 6 degrees of freedom it has got constrained okay so I have created uh, the next step also that is a load collector now my last step uh, for solving this model is to create load step so before creating load step click return to exit the load uh, constraint panel my last step is to create load step in load step I am going to define the type of analysis and after defining the type of analysis accordingly I will provide the loads and boundary condition to solve that particular analysis so to apply to create load step go to analysis page in analysis page you will find load step so click on load step panel once you click load step panel you will find name of the load step so you can enter name here and the type of analysis you want to perform so I will select uh, if you click on the drop bonds here uh, you will find the different types of analysis that is linear static heat transfer normal modes Frequency response, transient model, non-linear quasi-static, there are multi-body dynamic fatigue, there are different types of analysis available in using radios. So I will select linear static analysis. So once you select linear static analysis, it will require these six information to solve a linear static problem. So as I have all only defined two uh, load collector that is force and SPC, so I will define here uh, tick check the box in front of SPC and load and select the SPC as SPC that is single point constraint and load as force enter the name as beam bending so I have entered the name as beam bending and selected the SPC for that is single point constraint as a constraint which is applied in this location and the type of load is force which is applied in this direction it takes the component collector ID so you can see it has taken the component collector ID of force that is 1 and component collector ID of SPC that is 2 so it will always take the component collector IDs once you enter all these details click create to create the load step in the model browser you will find that your load step got created okay so then I will click return to exit the load step panel. Now uh, my next step is to solve this problem using radios. So I will update here that load step has been created. So my next step is to uh, solve this particular problem using radios. So now before it, it always a good practice to solve this model in a particular folder so that all the files generated uh, during the performance or during the solving process will be available in that particular single folder so it always better to save this file so to save this file go to files save as model and select the location to save this file so I will select this file in new folder beam bending
exercise and say save so once you save this file it got selected and then we will move to a uh, radios button and uh, then we will see it that how to perform a uh, select so as you can see I have saved this file so I will open the folder here you will find I have saved the file in .hm format now I will go to radios uh, for the solving process so to open radio solver go to analysis page in analysis page you will find radios as a solver so click on radios panel to enter to radio solver panel in radio solver select the export option to all so the so that all the files after solving get exported to the particular folder select the run option as analysis and memory option to default by default hyperworks takes a memory of 320 MB to solve the particular problem if you want to increase the limit of MB used for solving process you can just toggle this window and enter the values of MB it will take the RAM memory okay so click on save as to save this file uh, geometry file as FEM format in the same location so my FEM file that which contains all the loads and boundary condition will get saved automatically then click on radios to start the solving process so once you click on radios it will start the solving process and once you will find analysis completed that means your solve, uh, problem definition has solved completely so now we will uh, go and view the result so first of all I will close this window as solver has completed the analysis now to view the results using hyperview in hyperworks click on this page window layout icon on the top so this is a page window layout icon if you place a mouse on it you will find a page window layout icon just below that click on this drop down icon or arrow and split this window into two then click on the second window to view the hyperview GUI once you click on this you can will find that hyperworks GUI has been loaded once you open the hyperworks GUI click on open folder so click on open folder once you click on open folder you will find load model and road load results panel in this load the model that is the result format file and the result file will automatically get created then in the folder itself you will find that the s3d file uh, after solving the process you will find that it, it will gen it has generated these many files result files so to view the results in animated view and find out the value of stress and displacement which the software calculates after solving you will find that in h3d file h3d file is a altair hyperview player file it will it can be open using hyperview so again i will go to hyperworks student edition and click on the load model and just open the h3d file i will open this h3d that is altair hyperview player file and click open and say apply once you click apply the results of this particular problem will get uploaded so select the XY location which has been selected in for the models so I will see the results in the same format so click on YZ orientation so the same orientation is been submitted so first of all I will show you that if this is constrained so after due to the application of load my uh, beam should move something like this due to the application of bending load so I will find the value of deflection and stresses so to view the results of displacement click on contour once you click on contour select the result type as displayed and say apply so this will show you the value and results of displacement of this beam and also you can find the animation 
that is the movement of this beam due to the application of force so before that we will just verify that whether the displacement or deflection generated by the software is matching with the hand calculation or not so my deflection is 9.7 mm and then I will see here as you can see the deflection value is exactly same as the hand calculation so now I will go to result animation so to animate this result click on the play window here and view the animation make sure you have selected the static linear animation mode because this is a static analysis so you have selected the static animation linear mode and click play to play the result uh, visualization you can increase or decrease the time from this small icon so this is the increase or decrease of the time also if you want to increase the deformation factor that is the result visualization deformation that is showing the small deformation if you want to see it in a larger scale so click on deform and increase the value with a scale factor of say 10 if you increase it by 10 you can see it's deforming in a large way if you want to see uh, what is the actual shape and how it's deforming it so select the under deformed shape and click show to wireframe so this is the actual position of my model and due to the application of force it is deforming to this location if I stop this you can find out this is the actual deformation if I keep on increasing it you will find that this is the deformation in this way the deformation is happening so as I told you earlier due to the application of bending load with this location my beam will bend something like this and this location will get a maximum deflection now we will see the value of stresses so to view the value of stresses click on contour again from the result type this time select the elemental stresses as elemental stresses 1D and in elemental stresses select the C bar C beam longitudinal stresses at point C because I have oriented the cross section of this beam to a y axis so it will show you the stresses along point C so once you click you will find it the positive stresses is for a C location that is uh, 305.6 and similarly point E will show us the negative value so this is the negative that is the tension of uh, sorry compression side and that one is the tension side so in this way it has shown in this way uh, you can view the results and at point D and E it won't show any results it will show zero because point D and F will not be in the tension or compression side so we will just verify that this stress is what is the difference between the stress calculated by the software and health calculation so you can see this is the exact stress value as given in the software that is 305.6 so software is also showing with the same stress value 305.6 so if I open this uh, animation so you can see my software is providing the same result as per the hand calculations and in this way we can solve the problem statement for 1D beam bending exercise in which we have used hyper beam and verify our results with the hand calculations. Thank you very much.